This is the Carl Welshman Podcast with your pal, Carl Welshman. Hi there, it's me, Carl Welshman, and on today's podcast, I'm going to talk about some Christmas films that I watched some Christmas films that I fucking skipped through. I'm going to talk a little bit about Robocop and the Robodoc documentary. Now sit back, relax, and let's get started. Ah, yes. Well, here we go. Here we fucking go. It's my first podcast. It was only a matter of time, wasn't it? It was only a matter of time before Carl Welshman started gracing the Spotify airwaves with his dulcet tones and absolute nonsense now i'm i'm gonna be honest i'm always honest i'm gonna go back here a little bit when i started working on the carl welshman project the initial idea was always podcasting it was podcasting maybe reviewing the odd film and if you go back and you look at some of like the early videos that i did you know, they, they're quite lackluster. I didn't really know what I was doing or where I was going with this project. I just thought I'll chuck a couple of review videos out there and take it from there. Um, I talked a little bit about what films did I talk about? I think Lilo and Stitch. I talked a bit about Halloween. I talked a little bit about a couple of different films and all. But yeah, ultimately, the direction of my podcasts was going to be a couple of film reviews and some random fucking stories to pop up online, you know, just keeping it, keeping it simple. That's pretty much what this podcast is going to be. All right. I'm not going to commit to a standard format. I'm going to try and do a podcast maybe once a month, maybe once every two weeks, but once a month to start off with, and then we'll take it from there. Anyway, without further ado, this is the pilot podcast the pilot first episode scrappy as hell carl welshman podcast i'd like to welcome you to what's going to be quite a patchy show on first it's going to be quite christmas themed because i'm going to be reflecting and talking a little bit about some of the films that i watched over christmas there that it's that's just gone by get yourself comfy all right that's what i can that's what i can promise you you need to do right now get yourself comfy kick your shoes off all right maybe lay down maybe you're in the bath right now all right having a little slosh around you've got those bubbles dissipating around you exposing parts of your body you wish you couldn't see or maybe you do like the look of them maybe you've made a little submarine out of your junk or something like that but whatever you're doing i hope you're relaxed Here we go. Christmas films have become part of a routine. I'm very much a creature of habit. You know, Christmas, you do, you do your same traditions, or you try and do the same traditions, and they tend to be traditions that have uh, been within your family. Christmas meant a series of fucking old movies. Um, I say old movies. We didn't really get into, tradi- into traditional Christmas movies until... The other side of the 80s, you know, your fucking Home Alones and your Muppet Christmas Carol and Die Hard and those sorts of things. But they very much were a, a tradition that was cemented into my household and for me and my siblings. My siblings, because they are much younger than me, as anyone knows who's either got children themselves or is experienced with children, kids like to watch the same fucking thing over and over and over and over and over again. They just want to keep watching the same shit. And my brothers were exactly the same. So we had the Disney sing-along Christmas video cassette, right? And they'd had, I don't know, 10 songs on there with shitty lyrics across the bottom with Mickey Mouse's head just bouncing along, bouncing along the screen, along the lyrics, you know, as they were going along. and we'd sing along um i think mum probably put a little extra gusto into it you know really fucking belting the music out dad didn't sing he just sat there smoking his cigarettes just scratching his balls watching the tv he was he was happy doing that he, he didn't want to sing 
he, he's not really a singing kind of guy. So my brothers, they'd be sitting there, probably on their party, because uh, that was also a familiar scene in my house. Um, the, the younger siblings would be plumped onto their party and sit there defecating in the living room. You'd be watching TV and all of a sudden the entire living room would just fill with the smell of shit. And if they were left there long enough, they would be pissing and shitting. And then maybe the other sibling would do the same. Uh, there was a year between them and uh, two parties, a yellow one and a, a white one. And one of my brothers sometimes, he, he'd try and go on a little adventure. He'd be fucking scooping along on his party and then he'd fucking catch on the rug or the carpet and he'd flip over and there'd be shit all over the place and piss all over the floor and stuff. And then it'd be a big cleanup operation. And yeah. But um, yeah, so they, they'd be singing along and the Muppets, well, not Muppets, the Disney Christmas sing along video would finish and they'd immediately want it put on again. And so. Yeah, Christmas not only became a time of tradition and watching the same old films, but it also became quite a hellish, fucking never-ending nightmare, which um, it did lead on to a couple of other horrific nightmares when my dad then decided to go and get some more Disney sing-along video cassettes. And um, my brothers would continue to ask for them to be on day after day after day with hit songs from all of the classic fucking Disney cartoons, you know, like the Snow White songs and Someday My Prince Will Come and all these things. Um, yeah, absolute fucking nightmare. But also good times, you know, good times. Because as I got older and uh, met my, my wife, turned out that she was also into the same sorts of Christmas movies and movies as me. So our Christmas kind of spliced seamlessly into very similar traditions, but just without the shit and the parties. Year after year, we would watch the same old kind of films, you know, and then you'd have the classics, like I already touched upon, Home Alone 1, Home Alone 2, okay? Die Hard was in there, Rambo crept in. Rambo crept in because it is set at Christmas. Rocky IV also in there because, you know, that final fight does happen at Christmas. Um, but as I've got older, I don't know what it is, but I've liked Christmas less and less. I kind of, I don't know whether it's just you sort of reflect on the year and you're sort of, you know, thinking about, fuck me, I'm getting older now. I'm getting older. And so... I don't enjoy Christmas as much as I used to. Christmas comes and I get excited about the food and all that, but I also sort of reflect back and go, fucking hell, fucking hell. Let's see what the new year is going to bring. You know, we're going to do something different in the new year and the new year comes and you're kind of like, oh God, oh God, I'm just getting older. I'm just getting older. Uh, that's not to say though that, you know, I have got a few exciting things lined up this year but we'll, we'll come back to it. I'm, I'm going all over the place and this is what's going to happen with this podcast guys all right it's just a little a little place for me to just hear out a few a few of my dark demons that are plaguing me but let's get back on track here so i'm going to talk about a few films i watched this year and um, in no particular order and, and, and the main thing being that i was trying to get to was that i decided this year rather than watching all of the same films, we would try out a couple of new ones along the way um, and ones that we don't usually watch. So we did put Muppets Christmas Carol on. And there's something about Muppets Christmas Carol, which we, we, we go back to it year after year after year. And I don't get the same pangs of boredness that I do with some of the other Christmas films. It kind of does the job. It's neat. It comes in at about fucking 80 minutes. I think even when you, once you've skimmed the credits off, you're pushing maybe an hour and 15 minutes, which is just perfect for me. I have got to a point where I know it word for word, not the songs necessarily, more the dialogue and some of the little quips and jokes in there. Um, there's certain things in there that I don't find that funny. Um, and I know some other people might find it funny, but there's certain things that I don't find that funny. Michael Caine, 
he's an interesting character in it. And the, the younger version of Michael Caine in Muppets Christmas Carol is freakishly similar to him. I, I had to, every single year without fail, I have to go online to check to see whether this guy is fucking related to Michael Caine in some way. And, and every year, he's still not related to him. He's still not related. Now, for those of you who are listening, who are going, what the fuck is Muppets Christmas Carol? Muppets Christmas Carol is literally the traditional story of a Christmas Carol, you know, the one with Scrooge, where he's an absolute dick, right? He's a dick to his employees, he's a dick to his family, he's a dick to his community, right? <sighs> These Muppets that are all different animals, right? I mean, you have, you've got um, sort of like a dog one, and I don't know what Gonzo is, and you've got a talking rabbit. I don't really understand where real animals fit into this society, like the fucking goose that they're eating. Was that a Muppet at some point? You never know. Anyway, it's a good old sing-along. You've got all songs in there with Michael Caine singing so off-key that it literally, literally makes me shit my pants every single time he starts trying to sing at the end of the film. Um, but it's, it is, it's, it's a bit of fun in there. It's a bit of fun. Home Alone. Home Alone. I, I did put both the Home Alone films on, but I did a severely edited down version of these films. Completely edited down version. I literally watched the beginning right up until Buzz talks or does whatever he's fucking doing. And then I just fast forward to the very end. I don't fast forward. I mean, that would be back in the day when you had videos. I just skip to the end of the whole fucking thing, right to the end. Just watch, what's his name? Kevin McAllister as he tortures Joe Pesci and the other guy with a series of traps. But my main thing with Home Alone, I've been able to sort of just hold my tongue every single year with Buzz. I mean, I have shouted the odd, fuck's sake, Buzz needs to have a punch in the balls and what is the matter with this family? But this year... I just couldn't help myself. I, I just could not watch these films. I was just so angry for the entire time. The first film, you've got Kevin. His house is just full of family, right? Absolutely full of family. And you know what it's like when you've got a house full of people. You know what it's like. You know, most of the time you don't want these people there. But you're doing it because it's Christmas and you're doing it because it's family. But you cannot wait to see the back of these fuckers. And fucking Kevin's there. All he wants is a cheese pizza. He just wants a cheese pizza. But he can't have a fucking cheese pizza because Buzz the cunt has fucking either eaten it or has just handed it out to the rest of the family knowing full well that Kevin wanted it. And they've all eaten it. And then he's shacked up then with his fucking cousin or brother in real life, I think, who pisses the bed all the time. And he's like, I don't want to sleep in it with him. And they're like, right, you can go to the attic then. So he's so angry, he goes up to the attic, his family all fuck off, and by some misfortune he's left home alone, and then he just proceeds to have the best time of his life. It goes on for quite a long time, really, with not much happening. Um, there's two people that want to break into the house and rob the place. Kevin sets up a series of traps, which in real life would 100% kill a person. You know, a fucking painting to the fucking head, throwing someone down the stairs, setting light to them, all of these things, making them fall off the fucking side of a building, smashing into a wall. Kevin does it all to them. All in the first film. They miraculously survive. They get arrested. Kevin's family all come back from, I think they went to France or something. And I can't remember what the line is. They're like, oh, Kevin, what have you been doing? And he's like, oh, stuff. And they're like, ha, ha, ha. And they, and they all leave Kevin and he stood by himself. It's like some weird fever dream. It's so fucking weird. And then Home Alone 2 is pretty much exactly the same story, except um, they're on going on holiday and the family end up going one way. Kevin goes another uh, he gets tangled up with the same fucking criminals from the first film. I forgot to mention, Buzz has been an absolute twat at the start of this film as well. Kevin, it's a school play. 
Kevin's singing his little heart out. He's having a nice time. Buzz is behind him with two pretend candles. Starts pretending to drum on Kevin's head. All the audience are laughing, including Kevin's family. Then Buzz holds the lights behind Kevin's ears, taking the piss out of him. Kevin retaliates because, you know, as you would, Buzz is being a cunt. Kevin pushes him. That causes a massive ruckus. And it's Kevin that gets into trouble with Buzz walking around as if he's the fucking lord of the manor. Everyone loves Buzz. No. And so my blood was boiling at that point before we then skip into the same old shit where Kevin fucking does some stuff, monotonous things. He's staying in a big old hotel, using his dad's card, his credit card to buy whatever he wants. He's, he's got a fucking talk boy, which is some sort of tape recorder, a recording device, right, which allows you to record something, play it back at different speeds. So you can record your voice, and you're like, hey, I'm Kevin, and he slows down, hey, I'm Kevin, and people believe that that's an adult's voice. Ugh. Yeah, so Home Alone, Home Alone 1 and 2, both of which, well, Home Alone come out in 1990 and 1992 for Home Alone 2. Bunch of shit. Now, Christmas Chronicles, that come out in 2018. I like Kurt Russell. So a film with Kurt Russell playing Santa Claus and literally, it's not even like, he's not even fucking dressed up. They've just let Kurt Russell be Kurt Russell. He's got a fucking glorious beard beautiful thick mane of fucking hair right and they've just stuck a red jacket on him that's it he's fucking santa claus obviously they've, they've given him some powers and shit in the film but you know literally that's your santa claus there beautiful kurt russell there's two films but i i attempted to watch the uh, first one i have watched it a couple of times and each time i've uh, got to the end a little cameo at the end of it from uh his once beautiful wife, Goldie Horn, who's now become Smeagol. Um, she, she's had too much surgery. She's gone too far. Like, she fucking, there's a fucking line in there with surgery. Um, she has literally done so much to her face that she's barely recognizable as a human being. Kurt Russell, I don't think he's had any surgery. He's just Kurt Russell. He's just like, the pores of his hair have allowed an oil to form which drifts into his skin and just keeps him looking fucking young. I mean, yeah, he's looking beautiful, brilliant. But unfortunately, Christmas Chronicles is a pile of shit. It's so shit. Oh, over the years, like the first time I watched it, it was like, a, I don't know, fucking six out of 10, maybe seven out of 10, six to seven out of 10. And I was like, oh, it's all right, it does a job. You know, I can watch it, I can watch it. Then I watched it again. And I was like, and then I, look, I sort of looked across at my wife and my kids were sitting in the room and I got a nice nostalgic feeling, you know, kids are sitting with us, we're having a nice Christmas. So, you know, it, it, uh, I was like, cool, I'll tolerate this film because of them. But now that my kids are either not here or because they're older or they're just out or just not here or whatever they're fucking doing, I, I'm trying to watch some of these films by myself. So I put Christmas Chronicles on, sort of drank in the glory of Kurt Russell and then I got to one of those scenes where Kurt Russell, I can't remember even if they were in a car or even in a sleigh or whatever the fuck it is, is sitting alongside the male protagonist, this boy, and they're going along the road and they do that thing where they both go, huh? and they look at each other and they both go, huh? Huh? Whoa! Do you know one of those sorts of things, you know, uh, where they both scream in unison? And I just switched it off. I just switched it off. I just wish I had the option to actually just delete it from Netflix so that it never comes up ever again in my Christmas list of films on there. I was just like, oh, I just did a little bit of sick in my mouth. It's so shit. It was so shit. Um, I mean, I hope nobody's listening to this expecting like a proper review of these films. I'm, I'm just giving you a fucking, just a little idea of what I thought as I watched them. Christmas Chronicles is literally, it's about a single mother trying to bring up her kids. The mum, I think, she's having a shitty time. She's also gone too far with the surgery. She's it's the woman from uh, Father of the Bride with uh, Steve Martin, the, his daughter. Um, I was looking at her face as well, and I was like, 
can't work out whether you're young or 200 years old. She's had some serious work done. Um, if I remember right, I think the dad is dead. I don't know what it's a girl wish a dad comes back or some shit. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, and then it's just a series of stupid situations with Kurt Russell. I think he does an Elvis song or something randomly in a holding cell for the criminals and they all join in. Um, I didn't even get that far. Maybe I did. Maybe I just sort of zoned out while I was watching it, but I certainly did turn it off at the point where the, uh, the, the boy and Kurt Russell scream in unison together. I was like, that's, that's too much. Um, then I watched Fat Man. Okay, Fat Man is a 2020 film with Mel Gibson playing Santa Claus, right? And this is a fucking good one. This is a good one. Very different. Bit of drama, little bit of fucking humor in there, but it's done not, it's not a kid's film. It's quite violent. Um, so you basically, you got Mel Gibson playing Santa and he, his, his kids not wanting toys as much. And due to this, the government or the military have asked whether they can use his facilities and his elves to produce weapons and Due to the fact that he's not making much money because he's not making much toys or anything, he has no choice but to just take this on. Meanwhile, there's a little boy who's been getting coal. A little boy who's been getting coal every year because he's an absolute twat, hires a hitman to kill Santa. And this same hitman, also because he was a twat as a kid, never had a gift, uh, was always getting coal. So he's quite happy quite happy to go after fucking Mel Gibson and um, yeah it's quite a cool film it's, it feels very indie you know it's not your typical fucking Christmas film but it's it's a good film good Christmas film something a little bit different so that was nice to to watch that and that was our first sort of random Christmas film which we've only ever watched once before so it was good to just see something a bit different Mel Gibson as Santa Claus, almost as awesome looking as Kurt Russell, uh, glorious beard. He's he's got the uh, gravelly fucking Mel Gibson voice. He plays it well. He plays it well. It's not even tongue in cheek. I think Mel Gibson may have actually thought that he was Santa Claus in this film. Um, great film. So that's Fat Man. P two then. P2 from 2007 is an Alexandra Asia horror film set in a car park. Now, it's Christmas, so it's a Christmas film. And I know that doesn't sound that exciting, someone trapped in a car park, but what it is, it's you got this woman who she's finished up work, she's gone down to the car park to get her a car, and she soon realizes that. She isn't going anywhere. And that the security guard of this car park is an absolute fucking nutcase. Absolutely crazy. Now, Alexander Asia, he's famous for uh, switchblade romance or hot tension, which uh, is a French gory horror film that launched this whole wave of really depraved, sick French horror films. And then he went on to make uh, remake The Hills Have Eyes, one of the most relentless, fucked up horror films you can ever see, which I think is actually on the Disney Channel. If you like horror films, I really recommend watching it. It is nasty, 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 nasty. And one of those things where when it came out, I remember thinking, holy shit, this is fucking crazy. And it was one of those things where things had gone quite lenient when it came to horror films. They were getting away with quite a lot. Now, I think we've almost repressed a little bit and gone backwards because I don't think you'd be able to make a film quite as relentless and fucked up as the remake of The Hills of Eyes. Now, P2 comes across really like quite a subdued film for Alexander Asia because you're, you're watching it going, oh, I know the films he's made in the past, and this is literally a thriller with a psychopath and this woman. Um, 
and he's you know he's got her fucking he roofies her up he's he's got like a christmas dinner that he's made for her in his little security cabin and in the car park and um he's got her chained in this room with him and he's trying to get her to eat and he keeps saying i love you i'm not gonna hurt you I don't, i'm not gonna hurt you you know he's one of those psychos um but then there is this one crazy ass gory scene where a guy that had tried to grope this woman in the past um who is introduced briefly at the start of the film where he's like apologizing and saying oh, I, I was drunk and all that um he is tied up in a chair and uh, basically has a car ran into him by the psychopathic fucking security guard and the car pushes him slowly up against the wall and then just they slam it into him and all this fucking intestines and everything come out and yeah but that's not before he's been beaten across the head with a hammer a few times as well and that's where you're like okay yeah yeah this is definitely an age art film because that is nasty it's like his head's all fucking bashed and bleeding and blood squirting everywhere um but all this is going on with a beautiful Christmas theme. It's really tense, um, quite action-packed, good thriller, nice little sprinkles of gore in there. So I, I was entertained. And again, something nice and different to watch at Christmas. Um, then we watched a film called Silent Night. Now, there was a Silent Night that was released in 2023, which I haven't seen yet, which was a, a John Woo film. But the Silent Night I watched was from 2021. And essentially, it's about the end of the world, the end of the world. And it came hot on the heels of what was going on with COVID. And there's a lot of underlying messages around government instructions of vaccination and, well, which are hinting at vaccination, um, which are throughout the film. It is brilliant it's it's sort of laugh out loud it's bleak as hell great soundtrack um basically um there is a chemical uh, weapon that's being used and it's kind of got a timed release and it's sort of sweeping around the globe and if it gets you you will suffer a horrible death you'll bleed out of your orifices out your fucking anus out your eyes out of everywhere you have a really horrible death so the government have given out a tablet which everyone can take but only the rich and the privileged have access to these tablets the homeless and the people with no money and all of that can't get their hands on the tablet i think that's what it is anyway but anyway this film is focused around a really rich group living in this big old mansion having the last night on earth um and you just watch as the family sort of breaks down and secrets are revealed and affairs and all that sort of stuff and it's just done in a really great haunting way uh the little boy from jojo rabbits in it i can't remember his name he is fucking amazing uh seems to be the only one with any sort of sense but um yeah you, you just don't like anyone in this film you just don't like anyone in it they're all they're all absolute assholes. Um, but yeah, I really recommend that film. That, that was a fucking great film. A great film. Then, another one that we'd never seen before. Something in the Barn. Brand new film. Set in Norway. An American family moved to Norway, um, I believe, because this property belonged to uh, the some family member. So you've got a... Uh, a father with his uh, wife, well, this is his new wife and his biological son and I think biological daughter as well. So, you know, stepmom situation. They move into this house. It's got a big old barn in it. And it turns out that there is a kind of an elf. Looks more like a fucking traditional gnome living in the barn. And the whole premise is that almost like gremlins there's a series of fucking rules all right you leave him alone in the barn right and he will look after you you give him fucking treats you leave the barn alone just maybe just look after it keep it you know keep it sturdy look after him and the fucking gnome will look after you you do anything to piss him off though such as modify it fucking put big lights or shrill noises or anything like that and the fucking gnome will turn feral well that's what fucking happens 
the dad decides he wants to make this barn into like a fucking holiday place for people to stay in. He's got all fucking Christmas lights and invites people around for a party. And before you know it, you've got fucking gnomes all over the place. Killer fucking gnomes. Um, it is really fucking funny. It doesn't take itself serious at all. Very fucking tongue in cheek. Something in the barn from 2023. A uh, great Christmas film. Something a little bit different. And yeah, I recommend it. Might scare the kids. But you know what? Kids need to be scared these days. I think it's a good thing for them to be scared. Christmas just would not be Christmas without Die Hard. And I watched Die Hard again this Christmas. And I have watched Die Hard religiously every single Christmas since it came out in 1988 when I was a sweet tender, what, fucking, probably about 10. Die Hard is just fucking great. I mean, I'm not going to go into a huge amount of details here, but it's just got so many beautiful one-liners. And I can do a really good impression of Alan Rickman. You ready? Where are my bottle of tears? Where's my bottle of tears? My cloud? Where's my bottle of tears? And I know that sounds probably so close to Alan Rickman that a few of you, if you're not watching the video, will think that I've actually just taken that audio from Die Hard, but it is definitely me. De definitely me. Definitely me doing the impression. It's the same as like, you know, when he was in Harry Potter, Harry Potter, oh, I'm a wizard, Harry Potter, oh, Ron Weasley, you fucking cunt. See? See? There was no swearing in Harry Potter. So now I have proven that it was me doing that impression of Rickman. Um, Die Hard is just great. I'm going to continue to watch that every single year. I just can't get bored of it. I just can't get bored of it. And if you haven't seen Die Hard before, what the fuck? What the actual fuck? Right. Before we go any further, if you're watching the video of this, right, you're, you're looking now and you're going, Carl, your clothes have changed. That's because I got to a certain point in the podcast where I needed to go and do something. And when I come back, I recorded a whole section and my voice was all fucking echoey. Ruined. Ruined. So we're just going to pretend, right, for the purpose of the audio version, it's just fucking seamless. We're just carrying on. So shh, it's our little fucking secret if you're watching on YouTube. So, right, check the coast is clear. Let's crack on. So that's the end of the uh, Christmas movies that I watched this year and the ones that I recommend, along with the ones that I really don't recommend. Staying on the theme of films, something else that I watched over Christmas, and it was something I was so fucking excited to watch, was RoboDoc. RoboDoc is a documentary all about RoboCop. Everything you could ever want to know, not want to know, couldn't give two fucks about, about Robocop is in this documentary. And I remember a few years ago when they were actually talking about the documentary and, you know, it was in its early stages and they were looking for funding and all of this crap online. And I really, really, I was really interested. Really, 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 really. I was really interested. And I was like, oh, this looks cool. And the window for funding the project just fucking closed. And I'm going to be honest, because I'm always fucking honest, right? The people behind the documentary weren't very fucking clear on what was going to happen with the documentary after all the funding was done. So it, it wasn't clear whether you'd be able to buy it commercially. Would it be available to anyone that hadn't had an opportunity to back it? Um, was it going to be an online thing? Was it only going to be for like a small window of time? Because there has been a few documentaries, maybe even by the same company, but certainly by others, that this has happened, where it's only been a very limited run. Um, one that springs to mind is Leviathan, the Hellraiser documentary. You can't fucking get that anywhere. If you buy the Hellraiser original uh, Crimson box, whatever the hell it is, the original fucking three Hellraiser films, there is a snippet of this documentary on there. There's like a, maybe an hour of it when it's actually in total about three hours long. I was lucky. I managed to get that documentary when it first came out. But there were a couple that I wasn't so lucky with, one of them being uh, You're So Cool Bruiser, which is a Fright Night documentary. 
can't get that anywhere. So RoboDoc, documentary, huge, huge, long thing. Um, when they were originally putting this documentary together, right, I believe it was going to be all three of the films, the Prime Directive series, cartoons, comics, all of this. It was all going to be in this one documentary. They were using any crowdsourcing or crowdfunding to uh, pay, you know, for the likes of Paul Verhoeven and the actors and things like that to come in and talk about the film. Um, obviously, one of the big ones that they really wanted to get their hands on was Mr. Peter Weller himself. And um, back in the early days of putting this documentary together, they, they couldn't get him. He wasn't interested. He wasn't interested. A bit of a strange man, which uh, you do find out how fucking crazy this guy is in the documentary because he changed his mind. Lo and behold, he starts he starts doing his voice in uh, Mortal Kombat, in the uh, Mortal Kombat game that came out a couple of years ago. You've got Robocop in there. Peter Weller was happy enough to stick his voice in that. He recently voiced himself in the Robocop Rogue City game. And, um, yeah, he seems to have just crawled out of the woodwork. He's, he's happy as Larry now. He, he doesn't mind being Robocop. Now, Robocop for me, right? Robocop for me is one of the best films ever made. Absolutely love it. When it first came out, when it first came out, my dad wouldn't let me watch it. He'd, um, I remember he'd gone down to the video shop and he brought it home. And I was so fucking excited, so pumped to see it. But I think some douche in his workplace had warned him and said, look, this film is very violent. And at that time, I mean, Robocop come out in, what, 1987, something like that. Um, I, I was literally a, a little nipper of a little nipper of a thing. And I remember then my dad was almost bragging about how he'd watched the film and I hadn't seen it and that it was super gory and a guy got melted in it. So I was like, I really need to see this film now. Really got to fucking see it. A few weeks later, for whatever reason, maybe dad had had a drink or something like that. He had randomly changed his mind and brought Robocop home from the video shop, which I watched with my younger brothers at the time. Now, my brothers were only about fucking three or four years old, and they're watching Robocop in all its glory. And I can still remember clearly to this day, right, watching the film, waiting with anticipation to see the fucking acid melts melting scene, you know, with the toxic waste and everything. And when Robocop is, he's fighting Clarence Boddicker and he's got Clarence Boddicker around the throat and he's thrown him through the glass, right? I remember getting this sort of feeling in my head was of, does, is there a person that melts in this or are people just getting mixed up with, you know, because his face is being squeezed, it looks like he's being melted. And I remember almost feeling a bit disappointed because we're quite far into the film at this point. Obviously, as the film goes on, you know, they get to the old fucking iron mill and uh, Emil ends up driving his truck into this vat of toxic waste and out he pops, his eyes all fucking droops, skin is hanging off his bones, literally you can see his bones and I was like, holy shit, this is fucking mad, right? Now, I started to really get into collecting films as I got older, I was looking for, you know, I'd heard of all these legendary films. And I'm sure I'll talk about these in more detail um, in future podcasts. But I started to find out about a lot of the films we were getting in the UK were cut. We're not talking like the TV versions where the swearing's taken out. I'm talking about the actual theatrical versions and the versions we were getting on video were cut. And Robocop was one of those films. Um, and I remember then getting my DVD player and I got it modded so that it could play all regions of DVDs. And I remember getting my hands on the Criterion edition of Robocop and I put it on and was like, holy shit, you know, there was additional scenes where Peter Weller's character is being shot in the head and extra bit when his arm shot off, he gets shot a few more times. The Ed 209 scene goes on for longer. Lots of extended gore scenes in this film and i was just over the fucking moon absolutely loved this film second movie we ended up watching that because my dad was friends with the guy down in the video shop his name was matthew right and this guy my dad was he was a regular customer down there my dad was going down getting the old fucking three videos for the price of two or i think it was like 
six pounds for free videos or something ridiculous like that. And my dad went down there every other night, every other fucking night. He's down the video shop. My dad's like an excited little fucking school child. He's got these tapes here. I can't remember what the others were, but one of them was Robocop 2. And he puts it on. And I'd seen a few pirate tapes prior to this, which were, f they were just a mess. They were just an absolute mess. Couldn't make anything out. But he puts this one on. And you know what? Other than just a little bit of fucking haziness at the top and bottom of the screen, it was absolutely fine. This film, it looked great. It looked fantastic. There was a little scene towards the end where Robocop is fighting the Robocop 2 machine and a fucking head pops up at the bottom and there was a little bit of audience noise. But other than that, it was, um, it, it was spot on. After that, there were a few other pirates we got our hands on. A lot of sequels actually coming to Come to think of it, there was Predator 2, there was Die Hard 2, there was, what was the other one? Gremlins 2. I remember we had, so my, our cut of Gremlins 2 had Hulk Hogan in it, and I think it was John Wayne in the UK release, or switched that around. But I remember telling people about, you know, the cinema scene with Hulk Hogan standing up and shouting at the fucking gremlins and everyone going, what are you on about? That doesn't happen. Um, and I did think I was actually going fucking insane until years later when I did watch the, uh, the other version of it. So yeah, it was, it was, it were cool times, which brings me on to the Robo doc documentary. There's so much nostalgia behind it. And the original plan, like I said, was that they were going to have all of the, like Robocop, Robocop 2, all of the prime directives, all of that malarkey. And the whole project exploded. They got more funding than they expected. They got more actors, more people getting in touch behind the scenes, everything like that, which meant that they've actually had to split the whole thing up. Now, I believe the plan is that they're going to release another documentary, which will cover Robocop 2. And then another one for Robocop 3 and the other bits and pieces. I think that's it. Or it might be that they're packing everything into the next documentary. I can't remember. But I watched Robocop 1, 2, followed by the Robodoc documentary um, a couple of weeks ago. And it was a fucking brilliant day. I had such a bad hangover. And usually when I've got a hangover and I watch things, I don't tend to like them. But I had a bad hangover. But I had been so excited about watching all of the Robocop films again because it's been over a year since I've seen the first film. I tend to watch it every single year and quote every fucking line from it. And it felt like the best thing to do was to wait until I had the documentary, wait until I had Robocop 2 because I wanted a nice, clear fucking Blu-ray version of that. God knows when they release a fucking 4K special edition. You know, Arrow, come on, dickheads, pull your fingers out. But um, it was still fucking lovely to see it on my nice big TV, nice and crystal clear with the old surround sound speakers, drinking that in before jumping into the fucking documentary, which was incredible. Um, everything from how they did Robocop's footsteps to little things that I'd never noticed before, such as Paul Verhoeven's reflection being in the police car in one of the scenes to... The uh, guy who's getting shot by Ed 209, one of the squibs, the last one, actually goes off on his nutsack. And I'm not even fucking joking and trying to be crude there. They show it fucking pop. He had to just lay there for fucking 15, 20 seconds in absolute agony, not wanting to move. Otherwise, he'd have to do the entire fucking scene with all of these squibs all over again. So he just fucking drank it in. He just drank that pain in and just fucking laid there. So for anyone who loves Robocop, or even likes Robocop, or even just has an interest in a good film documentary that covers everything from fucking scoring the film to the fucking costumes, or anyone that just likes to see some crazy lunatic called Peter Weller talking about his fucking conquests on set, about how he was a single man, and yes, he did try to fuck every living fucking thing on set to within an inch of their lives, then the RoboDoc documentary is 100% for you. Thanks so much for watching or listening to this podcast. Any comments on any of the films or stuff I've talked about in this, please stick them down below. Give me a like if you like it. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. I tried. It's hard work. 
it's hard work, you know, trying to do a fucking podcast, but this is my first episode. It's going to be a bit rough around the edges. All right. So I appreciate your patience. But with all that being said, take care. All the best. Peace, Carl Welshman. This is the Carl Welshman Podcast with your pal, Carl Welshman.